vital role in both natural ecosystems and agriculture by pollinating flowering plants. Social bees, such as honeybees, bumblebees, and stingless bees, possess a variety of communication systems to help coordinate their foraging. Globally, bees face a myriad of threats, including human-caused climate change. These challenges not only threaten the survival of bees, but could also affect their communication strategies. I'm Matthew Hardcastle, and in this feature episode of Science Sessions, we'll explore how humans may alter the communication of bees with potentially widespread ramifications. The most elaborate form of bee communication is the waggle dance of honeybees. A foraging worker bee that has found a good source of pollen or nectar can use a waggle dance to inform its nestmates of the food's location. The worker bee performs a waggle run, during which it shakes its abdomen from side to side. At the end of the run, the bee turns left and returns to its starting position to perform another run. After that run, the bee turns right and returns again, forming a continuous figure eight pattern. The waggle dance tells observing bees how far and in which direction the food source is located. The duration of the waggle run corresponds to the distance of the food source from the hive. The angle of the run relative to the vertical orientation of the hive wall translates to the angle of the food source relative to the position of the sun. The worker may perform the waggle dance from 1 to 100 times, with more runs representing a higher quality food source. Because the waggle dance is easily observable, it allows researchers to decode honeybee communication. Maggie Cuvion is an entomologist at Virginia Tech who studies the foraging strategies of bees. Cuvion explains what information researchers can glean from the waggle dance. Because the waggle dance is this unique behavior, the information we can get from it is really one of a kind. You can't get it in any other way. Because a bee will only dance for a good resource, by definition, if you can decode and then map these dances onto the landscape, you can end up with a landscape level view of where the bees have found good food. And because lack of good food is one of the stressors that's contributing to bee declines, this gives us some really useful information about where they're going to eat. Important for any conservation, you wanna know where your animal is eating. Now the honeybee itself may not be in need of conservation, but certainly beekeeping is harder to do now than it used to be. And it could be as well that the bees are indicating places that might be also good for supporting other flower visiting insects. In a more fundamental way, because the dance and some of the other behaviors too reflect how the bees value a reward, we can set up experimental situations and that lets us peer into the, the bee's brain. Christoph Gruder, a behavioral ecologist at the University of Bristol in the United Kingdom, is the author of a recent PNAS article on how bees might adapt their communication strategies in response to anthropogenic disturbances. Climate change represents one of the most profound threats to bees. Gruder describes what impact climatic changes may have on the usefulness of the waggle dance. Changes of the climate can have um, either direct impacts, um, but it can also have indirect impacts. You can imagine that in tropical environments, um, there are places where the time window when foraging is actually suitable for bees becomes very narrow. And that could also mean that it can become really beneficial for bees to be able to very quickly activate lots of nest mates and inform them now foraging conditions are good, there are now rewards. Um, and then communication can really be beneficial. Whereas in temperate environments, it probably means that the time period of food availability increases in a day, and that probably will not make communication more beneficial. It could actually even mean that you don't necessarily need to communicate because you now have access to food over a longer time period. Directly, depending on where you are, it could again mean that it might no longer be a good idea for you to travel far for example, because that creates a lot of heat stress. So it could impact the distance where bees find their food. And foraging distance is in itself something that determines the value of communication. If you find food very close to the nest, then that makes it less beneficial to be able to dance and tell other bees where you found the food. Whether warming temperatures will directly affect bee communication is as yet an unsettled matter. However, studying the effects of heat stress on bee foraging and physiology can offer some clues. 
In an article published in the Journal of Insect Physiology, Mikhail Hernscher, a behavioral ecologist at the University of Sao Paulo in Brazil, recorded the impact of rising air temperatures on foraging in stingless bees. We did a study in the Brazilian Northeast. It's a tropical dry forest. We did some experiments uh, putting feeding stations at short distances from the from the hive and at not very far but <laughs> further distances we got up to 100 meters and uh, we made some thermal images at the feeding site to see for one hand the thorax temperature abdomen and head temperature of the bees at the feeding site and its association with uh, air temperature at short distances the bees had no problem at all even at, at very high temperatures they didn't overheat at all uh, due to the fact that they were capable of dissipating enough heat to the abdomen the further they, they got from the nest the more problem they had of dissipating the heat both uh, head and abdomen started to increase their temperature which is a, a problem for bees particularly the overheating of the head where you have uh, most uh, centers of the, of the nervous system that uh, will cause some malfunctioning of the nervous system in case you overheat it. Under hot conditions and conditions with, with little uh, shade where they can fly, then they should stay closer to the nest to avoid overheating. Humans have also significantly altered the landscapes bees inhabit by creating agricultural and urban areas. Gruder explains how these landscape changes and resulting fragmentation of habitats might affect bee communication. The value of, of communication, of telling another bee where she can find a high quality food source really depends on how food sources are distributed. If it is very easy to find food because it's essentially everywhere, then you don't need communication. But when you have uh, particularly fragmented landscapes where you have certain patches where you have uh, high quality food sources, then communication can suddenly be very beneficial. What you tend to have is that you create these huge areas where it is very easy for bees to find food during certain times of the year. For example, you have large orchards or you have large field, fields of, let's say, all seed rape here in Europe. Um, in this kind of environment, it's probably not very important to be able to communicate to pinpoint locations. And then after the bloom is over, let's say in July and August, often you experience a situation where there is almost nothing left. We're not entirely sure basically how the value of communication changes in urban uh, environments. One problem is that urban environments themselves are extremely diverse. While urban environments may seem inhospitable to wild animals, they can sometimes support surprising diversity. In an article published in the Journal of Applied Ecology, Ellie Ledbeater, an ecologist at Royal Holloway University of London, found that the dancing honeybees found the foraging environment of central London superior to agricultural land. You might initially think that the urban environment is kind of a bit of a concrete jungle, right? And there's a lot of uh, impervious surface. But if you think about what humans tend to plant in their gardens, they like diversity and they like to have color all year round. Um, so that means that gardens actually represent quite a diverse source of food for bees. We found a very convincing uh, pattern across uh, almost all of our sites that in the urban environment, the bees were having to fly less or they were finding food closer to the hive than was the case in the agricultural environments. That doesn't mean they were always um, having to fly a long way in the agricultural environments because there was a lot of variation through the season. Sometimes they would find food nearby, presumably when there's a mass flowering crop nearby. But generally, when those mass flowering crops weren't there, then they were having to go a long way. Whereas in the in the urban environments, they really weren't having to fly very far. Not all bee species are likely to benefit from urban environments. The distribution of habitats within a landscape is also important to the foraging success of bees. In an article published in the Journal of Insect Conservation, Chris Brayman, an entomologist at the University of Georgia, studied how the distribution of development, agriculture, and forest land cover at different scales influences bee diversity in Georgia. A key challenge in research on the effects of landscape context on biodiversity is to determine the scales 
at which species are influenced by these various landscape factors. And this is called uh, the scale of effect. We found bee diversity and abundances of individual species to correlate negatively with forest cover at smaller spatial scales, but positively at larger spatial scales. So this likely points to the enriching effect of a more blended landscape. So as the landscape scale increases and forest cover can be included among other cover types, then the correlation with pollinator richness switches to a positive one. Our results showed that residential landscapes can support high bee diversity and that this diversity is sensitive to landscape context at different scales. Although development can have a negative effect on bee diversity overall, some bee species are favored by these open conditions that are characteristic of developed areas. Another anthropogenic threat to bees is the widespread use of insecticides, especially in agricultural landscapes. Beyond killing bees outright, sublethal doses of insecticides can harm bee health and behavior. Gruder explains how insecticides may alter bee communication strategies. It seems that pesticides are probably never going to be good, at least for communication or for behavior in general. Some of the effects, for instance, impair the ability of bees to learn, um, which will affect their navigation. There are studies that have found that pesticides affect how bees perceive rewards. So they might, for instance, suddenly think that something that is a relatively good reward is no longer that uh, good of a reward and is no longer worth dancing. So that as a result, you will have um, fewer dances uh, in bees that have been exposed to pesticides. There are also studies that show that the dances themselves become slightly less precise, which could be a problem. Another aspect of communication in social bees is nest mate recognition. In some species, specialized guard bees stand watch at the hive entrance, where they use chemical cues to differentiate between returning nest mates and invading members of another hive or species. In an article published in Chemosphere, Denise Alves, a behavioral ecologist at the University of Sao Paulo in Brazil, described how sublethal doses of a fungal pesticide can affect nest mate recognition in stingless bees. These uh, stingless bees has a special feature, like they have guards, specialized guards in the entrance of the colony. And so they are capable to recognize uh, the nest mates from the non-nest mates and other species. These biopesticides, the fungus uh, Bovera bassiana, uh, may change the cuticle of these insects. And so the, these chemical cues will change a little bit and maybe the guards don't recognize these workers they were exposed to the, these biopesticides. We tested uh, exposed nest mates and exposed no nest mates from 10 colonies. For our surprise, the guards can recognize the nest mates, of course, but uh, they repel the exposed fungus exposed to nest mates because Maybe it's a big uh, issue for the colony to accept these exposed nest, nest mates inside the hive and they, they spread the fungus through all the colony members. On the other hand, they are rejecting a foraging force. So there is a trade-off in this, in this system. No? Compared to wild bees, honeybees are relatively less threatened by anthropogenic effects because humans have actively cultivated and spread honeybees around the world. However, beekeeping practices have also inadvertently facilitated the spread of diseases between beehives. In a PNAS article, Adam Dolzal, an entomologist at the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign, described how a bee pathogen called Israeli acute paralysis virus affects nestmate recognition in honeybees. Honeybees have very strong nest mate recognition abilities. They can tell who is a member of their colony and who is not by chemical profiles that are on their exoskeleton and they're on the outside of their body. They have this very strong ability to tell who is who uh, and kind of keep out bees from other colonies. We did this in field colonies where we took a whole colony and we put a little special observational entrance to make it easier for us to observe. And then we could take infected bees 
and present them to the entrance and just observe what happened. And bees who were um, infected with the virus were, were substantially and significantly more likely to get accepted into that foreign colony than normal bees were. We think that the virus in some way is manipulating this chemical signature just to make them smell more acceptable. Compared to the deadly effects of heat stress, pesticides, and diseases, anthropogenic alterations to bee communication strategies may seem minor. However, these changes represent yet another stressor that could amplify the impact of other threats to bee health. If the waggle dance becomes less useful in an altered environment, honeybees in some regions may start dancing less. Without focused conservation efforts, the communication strategies of bees and the invaluable ecosystem services they provide could become endangered. Thanks for tuning in to Science Sessions. If you like this episode, please consider leaving a review and helping us spread the word.